Student of magic, now that you've unlocked the very first aspect of your aura, it's time to test your inclinations. Here's a glass of water with a floating leaf. Fear not, all you need to do is to focus your aura and one of six things will happen. If the water overflows, it means you are an enhancer. Your powers will boost and strengthen the natural forces of your body and your environment. If you change the taste of the water, you're a transmuter. You can shift the properties of your aura, turning it into the hardest steel or the softest cotton candy. If the water changes color, it means you're an emitter. Your body will be the gun and your aura the bullets. You'll be able to project yourself with intensity. If the leaf moves around the water surface, you're a manipulator. You can control and command the world around you, including other people. If any object, like tiny specks of dust or an ice crystal, suddenly appears in your glass, it means you're a conjurer. You have the power to summon mysterious objects, but always for a price. Lastly, if something unexpected, uncharted, something either beautiful or dreadful happens in your glass, then you're one of the few specialists. I cannot tell you what sort of ability you have, I can only tell you it's going to be unique. What you just heard was an introduction to water divination, a crucial piece of Hunter x Hunter's magic system. And it does make it sound like a hard magic system, right, with predictable rules and limitations. Alas, it's a, it's a bit more complicated than that, so <laughs> let's talk about it and let's learn how to do something that feels like it's defying the way that we normally talk about magic systems. World building is not a skill that you can improve by just watching, reading, playing. You must create, you must try your hand. And this is the whole point of this series here, the world building tower. With every episode, I bring to you a fantastic piece of world building and we explore a singular, unique aspect of the world building. One of the characteristics that make this world building so captivating. And from there, I extract an exercise that anybody can try at home, you can try at home. And at the very and I present my own take of this exercise just as an example of what could come from this set of rules. I had a much better scenario just a moment ago, right? But uh, I don't know, children started screaming and dogs started barking and the neighbor was like, ah, piano, ah. so I was like, ah, here I am. <laughs> Magic systems, the pride and joy of so many world builders. If you follow other fantasy writing channels here on YouTube, like uh, Tin Hickson or Daniel Green, or even if you follow the fantasy world building subreddit, you've certainly heard of the distinction between hard and soft magic systems. I won't delve much into those themes here, I don't feel I have anything substantial to add to this conversation, but if you've never heard of this before, I would recommend you to watch this Hello Future Me video, it's gonna be up here and also in the doobly-doo below, just so you get acquainted with the terms and you understand what the hell I'm gonna be talking about here. But, just the, the broad strokes, just a, a reminder for you so I can explore a more specific example, Here's the basic gist of it. Hard magic systems are the ones with clear and predictable rules. Both the reader and the characters understand the limitations, the mechanics and the systems of magic. Think something like the Allomancy that we discussed in the last World Building Tower episode, or Magic the Gathering's five color system, or Avatar's bending system, where we can understand what each character can and can't do. On the other hand, soft magic systems are all about dancing and playing with mystery. Both the characters and the readers have only a vague idea of how the magic really works. This invites surprise and mystique. 
Studio Ghibli is really good at soft magic systems, like in Howl's Moving Castle or Ponyo, where nothing is explained, just experienced. In Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, the characters have completely random powers that sometimes change for no reason at all. In A Song of Ice and Fire, this lady just doesn't burn to death? Why? Both sides have their weaknesses and strengths. I'm not here to tell you which is the right one for you. I'm here to talk about a system that seems to actively defy those definitions. Let's talk about Hunter Hunter. Is it Hunter versus Hunter? I've always called it Hunter Hunter. Hunter Hunter. When the show starts, you are sure it's going to be a soft magic system. Each character seems to have their incredibly unique power. This lady has trained killer bees inside her hat that obey her commands. These fox creatures are freaky shapeshifters. This guy is, is just blue. There's, there's no particular reason for it. And that's okay. You enjoy the softness of it. These special kids can jump 12 meters and be hit by hammers and they don't immediately die. It's nice. But little do you know, that the magic system is yet to be introduced. These characters, with all their incredible powers, they haven't even achieved magic yet. This is quickly introduced in season two, a delightful hard magic system called Nen. This system is introduced in the hardest way possible. The characters become magic students and we learn about the rules and mechanics of the magic on a whiteboard. And it is heavily suggested that all the softness from before, all those crazy abilities, that's all rubbish. The only strong people in the world are the magic users of Nen. What a strange, bold choice. But that's alright, because Nen is actually super interesting. It's divided in six types of magic users, with uh, limitations on what they can do, and what sort of adjacent technique they can learn to combine with their main type. And since different characters from our main cast have different name inclinations, we can explore the system from multiple angles. Except that those tight and interesting rules they introduce so clearly to us they get broken all the time. One of the six main types of Nen is the specialist, and either you're born one or you can't absolutely train that skill. Except that's a lie, it doesn't take a full season for this rule to be broken. Conjurers have this whole interesting system where they can summon objects, but they have to pay a price equivalent to what they want. But then all conjurers seem to summon the craziest, non nonsensical objects that can do all kinds of abilities. So what's the point of explaining those rules if you're just not going to use them at all? Okay, so, does it matter? No. The show is very character focused and we, the, the audience, we, we can live with those inconsistencies. Yeah. Sure. Just a small future plug here, I'm currently writing an episode on Jojo's Bizarre Adventures magic system, and those inconsistencies over there make the ones I'm talking about like perfectly reasonable. Nothing's wrong. And both shows are critically acclaimed. What I find fascinating as a world builder watching Hunter x Hunter is that I can't really say, oh yeah, this is definitely a hard magic system because there's all those crazy abilities that keep changing. But I also can't say, oh yeah, this is definitely a soft magic system, because there are the, the rules of Nen, and they are explored as the seasons go by. So what I end up with is something that it's not hard, not soft, something that seems like it was made by somebody who never heard of this, of this characterization. And this is cool, this is novel. It defies this whole archetypical definition. It just doesn't apply here. And it does that by being both at the same time, by having both strong, hard magic elements and strong, soft magic elements. And now this, this dichotomy that looked like it was excluded it's not necessarily excluded. There's an example that combines both. In many ways, those narrative decisions are confusing. But in other ways, this show is capable of applying the best of what hard 
in soft magic systems can do. Sometimes those unique powers, they can give us a lot of information on a character's personality, which is easier in soft magic systems, where powers don't have to conform to specific rules. Some other times we can quickly judge a character's abilities to solve problems, just by their type of name. Because this part of the system is hard enough to give us a good idea of what they could do, even before we see them in action. The same character can be experienced as a student or a master, just depending on the scene. Is this confusing? Yes. But it does provoke the emotions it wants to provoke. My heart is beating faster, and this is what really counts. Consistency is not a goal, it is just a tool. And sometimes it's not a tool that you should use. Do I care that Kilua is not consistent? No, I love him. <laughs> I really think that mixing this hard and softness is, is a bold choice. And I say that with, with no irony at all. And myself, I would also like to experiment with bold ideas. So let's draw inspiration from this blunt, deliberate paradox. And let's have one bold idea ourselves. Let's go for our world building exercise. Today's exercise will sound much easier than what it actually is. <laughs> Since we're talking about magic systems, evidently I'm gonna ask you to create one of your own. And as you can probably imagine, we need two sides, two, two aspects of this magic system. One hard, one soft. Just like Nen, we want this magic system to be a bit undecided, a bit flexible, a bit paradoxical. If Hunter Hunter can wield its paradox to create interesting situations, can, can play around this predictability and randomness, then so can we. Besides those two aspects of the magic system, I'm, I'm interested in how would you deal with that dichotomy? How would you play with your paradox in your story? In which way can your paradox contribute to the development of your characters, or your world, or the advancement of your plot? And bonus points if you can talk about the macro scale, the, the big ideas, the big issues, but also the micro scale, the personal level, the small things. Yes, of course we're interested in governments, and, and war, and ecology, but we're also interested in people and their little dreams and little feelings. Sounds simple, but it might not be that simple. It, it's up to you, really. <laughs> and with that, we go to the last part of the video, which is my take on this exercise. As always, just an example. Just one out of infinite examples. I hope you folks add your examples, your own world buildings to the comment section below. It makes me so happy to see great creators contributing to this pot of creativity here. Really, it makes my day. All right, folks, let's make some magic. I'm drawing some inspiration from Hunter x Hunter, but I'm also drawing a little bit of inspiration from Magic the Gathering's Lawing and Shadowmoor blocks. And I really wanted to delve into this paradox. I wanted it to be at the, the core of my magic system. So here's my solution. Imagine this highly magical world, ruled by the strongest and the most violent. Magic is everywhere. Everybody is at least a little bit magic. And there's nothing as powerful as magic, especially because magic is not evenly distributed. Picture that, there's this powerful wizard who decides to relinquish their lust for power and instead gather a, a round table of wizards so that they can all protect each other and live in harmony. That might work, sounds good on paper, but maybe the wizard next door is 10,000 times stronger than any of the wizards in that round table. Because the magic is so unevenly distributed, you never know the power gap. So why am I talking about power dynamics between people and not really about the details of the magic? Well, it's because in this world, magic is complicated in a very peculiar way. Six year cycles. Once in every six years, there's a day when the sun shines blue and a night when the moon shines orange. The next morning, everybody's abilities, 
everybody's level of power has changed and they have no way to predict how. You see, the magic system here is hard with predictable rules and limitations and interactions, but in six years it will be suddenly replaced by a completely different, also hard, magic system. Which means that all the accumulated knowledge that the previous cycle had gathered on how this system works is kind of useless now. And everybody, literally everybody, will have to figure out uh, not only how this new system works, but also what their abilities are and how their abilities interact with the wider system. This might sound convoluted. But so does Hunter x Hunter and I still love it. <laughs> I think a permanently rebooting system presents interesting options. Imagine the sudden shift in power relations this could create and how the characters would have to adapt to a completely different set of skills. The Tyrant Lord Almighty desperately trying to secure their empire and kill their enemies before the cycle resets because they just don't know which power they'll get when it happens. The slave that wakes up to an uncontrollable destructive ability and faces an internal conflict between using or not using such power. The professional assassin who wakes up with a new power of summoning delicious apple pies. And of course, the scholars and nerds who will immediately start to explore and probe and map out the new system. Which kind of information do you think they will be really willing to share with the public? Loads of interesting character arc changes and a guaranteed period of intense societal turmoil once the cycle resets. Nations changing borders and people being killed and people being freed and people figuring out how the world works now and all the while they know it will only last for a while. That sounds like a cool premise for a TV show or an RPG campaign. That's it for today folks, I hope that was useful, I hope it was entertaining and as always if you share your exercises, your volcanic creativity in the comment section below, oh, it makes my day really, really, really. <laughs> and as always as well, a special thank you to my patrons. Thank you so much for sponsoring this tiny, tiny channel. It's really humbling to have patrons. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'll see you next time with perhaps more magic systems, perhaps? Let's see. Bye. <laughs>